Hello everyone. Welcome to another IR capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. We have delayed discussing the appointment of the new British Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, because of the Diwali holidays, etc. But it was on the Deepavali day itself that Rishi Sunak became the British Prime Minister. It was a historic event because he is characterized by the British as the first British Prime Minister of color. That is the description that he has been given by the British press and officially. But he has been described in many other ways in different parts of the world. In India, we often refer to him as the first Indian origin Prime Minister of UK. Other places, they may call him the first Asian or so first South Asian. Uh, many people call him the richest Prime Minister ever in the history of the UK. So, so many definitions have been given to him, uh, but none of it is complete because his background has been varied. His parents were in Africa, from which they, they migrated from India, they went to Africa, and then they migrated to the UK. And Sunak is a, is a British citizen, educated in Oxford and Stanford, worked for uh, uh, companies and became a very rich person. He got elected in uh, 2015 from Richmond, then 2017 and 2019. And Boris Johnson appointed him as the finance minister, the chancellor of the exchequer, which he performed very well. And uh, then uh, the, when Boris Johnson resigned, it was rumored that he had a, had a chance and he went through a long process of electioneering uh, with, within several candidates and he emerged as the successful candidate among the British conservative parliamentarians. But then when he went to the conservative group as a whole, he lost to Liz Truss and he had warned her about the future policies. He had said that uh, she should not uh, give too many tax concessions before the financial situation had stabilized. But within 44 days, she managed to mess up things much more and uh, there was a profound economic crisis. And at this stage, when she resigned, there was hardly anybody else who could uh, take on the role of the Prime Minister. Uh, still, Boris Johnson thought about it for a while, but he could not get the number of supporters to even put forward the candidature. And so, Rishi Sunak became the Prime Minister not because he is, he is colored, not because he is uh, of Indian origin, not because he is of Asian origin, so many descriptions. But actually he became Prime Minister by sheer dint of merit. At that particular time in history, there was no one else visible in the horizon who could take over UK and succeed in recovering from the profound economic crisis it had gone into. So this was the right man at the right time, at the right place. And there was really no challenge because nobody else had the experience or the expertise to handle the situation. So it was his merit, his background, everything that resulted in becoming the British Prime Minister. So, and also this is not the first time that uh, person of Indian origin uh, reaches uh, senior positions, leadership positions in other countries. There have been several places where Indians have became heads of state and prime minister. So even in Ireland, there is a uh, Indian origin, or because he is half Indian, half Irish uh, prime minister. So many, many places this has happened. And we have noted them and we are proud of uh, their, their achievements. But when it comes to UK or USA, uh, we have this sense that we are conquering our conquerors. 
because for many years UK ruled over India and the United States still dominates the world. So when Prime Minister, when um, Kamala Harris became the vice president, there was the same excitement in India, even though she did not characterize herself as an Indian at any stage. She won the election basically as a black leader, uh, but then the Indians skipped in because they felt that an Indian origin person uh, would be of some help to India. And that has been a bit of a disillusionment because she has not seen any inclination to be a particularly friendly to India. And same should happen in the case of Rishi Sunak also. Uh, everyone agrees that he will be a British Prime Minister, serving the interests of Britain and working very hard to rescue UK from all the problems that it has got into uh, since uh, Brexit, which he supported. And uh, therefore, he became the Prime Minister uh, as a result of the circumstances. And he was considered the best possible bet for the UK. Of course, this is yet to be seen because, first of all, he has to succeed in rescuing because he has come as a kind of saviour for the UK. So, depends on how he's able to do that. People know that he has some formula but it need not be a magic formula. And uh, if he succeeds, the advantage will be that he can continue as Prime Minister for two more years and uh, maybe lead the Tories, the Conservative Party, in the next elections and maybe win. Because at this point in time, the Conservative Party was not in a position to go for elections because at the moment, according to the election ratings, uh, Conservative Party has only very low majority, low uh, support. So they had to carry on the mandate that received earlier to the Conservative Party, which Boris Johnson had won. And uh, as long as they can decide on another leader, they can continue without declaring a general election. So his uh, mission is two, twofold. One, to rescue the British from the present economic crisis. And secondly, to lead the Conservative Party in the next elections. And uh, so these are both very difficult uh, situations. Uh, but still, uh, he has become Prime Minister not by any, any election or voting or anything like that. Uh, but he was kind of made he was, uh, because there was no alternative to him. Uh, in India, naturally, there is uh, some jubilation. And uh, some people even think in terms of a kind of triumphalism uh, that India is uh, finally wreaking vengeance on, on UK for all it had done in India, colonialism and exploitation and atrocities and so on. So they say, some people say that is vengeance on the Battle of Plazi, the Yalianwala Bagh, or the partition of India, etc. All the grievances uh, you know, we have. And we say, we say that, uh, you know, uh, this is a, we are, we have one over. So we have sp scored a point over the British. But this is just a, just a sentiment. So the real truth is that Western democracies are, uh, uh, you know, lands of opportunities. And uh, many people have succeeded in different areas, regardless of their race, color, name, uh, religion, etc. So it was earlier, it was the, the companies, you know, you can look at several US and British companies, the head of which are uh, of Indian origin. And so it is simply that uh, that has been now transferred, in fact, uh, to the government and uh, so from uh, companies, leadership, of course, which are very, very significant. Now, the level of the expectation of Indians has risen uh, because here is, here they, for the first time, some of them have come to leadership positions in the countries, particularly in the UK as the, as the pinnacle of power. So what it proves is that uh, uh, the, the tolerance, uh, the meritocracy that they have, and also the 
land of opportunities. So that is what has been proved. And it should not be taken in the, uh, in the sense that India has won some kind of a battle. Uh, I'm sure the uh, Minister Sunak will function as, the, as a classic British Prime Minister, taking the interests of the UK as their prime responsibility. But of course, it is true that uh, he may have some sentimental connections, but at the same time, that may go against his being particularly friendly because if he shows any kind of uh, extra uh, priority to India, that may go against uh, him. In fact, he has done the opposite because he has reinstated a home minister of Indian origin who has been very critical of uh, Indian migration. So he could have excluded her this time, but he did not. Because he felt that anything that he does to her would be misunderstood as a, as a favor to India. So he um, has become the uh, prime minister because of the sheer dent of his uh, merit. Of course, some people point out that uh, his wife is Indian citizen and that to a very famous family. Uh, Sri Narayana Murthy's daughter is his uh, wife, so his connection with India is closer. It might be, it might be true, but um, her Indian citizenship has only gone against him because people say that she has done this in order to, uh, you know, save taxes. Whatever may be the truth, we do not know. But she is, she is an Indian national. So whether she got tax benefits or not is a matter of uh, judgment. So he will definitely be uh, taking decisions in the best interests of the UK. Uh, it is true that when, the, when our Prime Minister greeted him, he made two points. One, that he will be a bridge between India and the UK. That is fair to be expected. But he did not say that would mean that we would expect any concessions from UK. And many people have written and spoken toward the need for him to be very strictly a uh, uh, British Prime Minister. But he also mentioned the trade agreement, which is being discussed, which was, which was being discussed, but was discontinued. Boris Johnson himself was um, willing to consider it. Uh, but with the Ukraine war and very other many, many uncertainties, uh, countries are unwilling to reach multilateral or bilateral agreements of great seriousness at this point. Uh, people are postponing decisions. And therefore, it looks that the, our trade agreement has also reached that category. The Prime Minister mentioned the trade agreement, not because Sunak is the Prime Minister, but any Prime Minister he would have mentioned that. And um, I'm sure it will be considered and it will be very thoroughly scrutinized by the Prime Minister before any uh, discussion, any decision is taken. So, uh, we, while we can be uh, proud of uh, his uh, Indian descent, he sh we should be treating him as a formal, normal UK Prime Minister with some understanding of India, particularly since uh, the present generation Indian is uh, married to him. Uh, Another interesting thing that is that uh, this has happened at a time when some of our people, some people in India, have been um, very vociferous about uh, British colonialism and its atrocities in India. Uh, many speeches have been made and articles have been written. Even a book has been written about the British atrocities in India. And this is by sheer accident that uh, a British, an Indian, Indian origin has become prime minister at a time when this such a, a noise is being a, made about it. There's no purpose in this because traditionally, uh, once uh, independence is given to a country, normally there is no possibility of examining any kind of claims. This has happened in some other cases where uh, judgments have been made that once a, a country has been granted uh, freedom, whatever circumstances it may be, uh, there will be no claims, etc. afterwards, because that's not settled for once and for all. Otherwise, there will be hundreds of thousands of cases because so many countries have become independent from the colonies and how, who is going to settle all this? Um, but here, this has been mentioned 
and uh, compensation has been demanded. Apologies have been demanded. In fact, the Queen and uh, the, the Prince went to Jallianwala bag and placed their wreaths there, partly uh, expressing regret over what happened. But uh, we have been demanding uh, compensation and also apologies. So this is, will be very, very a sensitive subject for Sunak because such an issue uh, should not arise at this time. And uh, I'm sure he will try to avoid any reference to that. Uh, but since it has happened now, there could be more criticism and there will be more demand. Uh, but I'm sure he will not touch it. And uh, it will be also prudent for us not to raise it in order to create a, a problem between the two countries. Because it is not likely that any compensation will be um, paid. And uh, by taking a case like that, um, at a time when there is a, an Indian origin prime minister, it would be doubly dangerous, I think. So that should be set aside and he will, this should not be pressed, these charges should not be pressed, pressed at this time. Uh, the other tendency in India is uh, to uh, take this as, as an example to show how Indian democracy is not genuine or adequate uh, because it's being said uh, that uh, such a thing would not have happened in India. How would a recognized minority person reach the highest places in India? And this is something strange because that she seems uh, someone is not aware of the history. Uh, we have had many uh, minority members of the minorities in India who have risen to very high positions, presidents, um, judges, uh, chief ministers, so many people. And uh, there has not been any uh, bar in our democracy for any kind of caste or religion. And uh, of course, there may be considerations like that, but they have reached the top for various reasons, including the prime minister. Because uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh, as a Sikh, uh, was a member of the minority. So this kind of criticism that uh, uh, this shows some kind of superiority of British democracy over us, it is basically a political argument to criticize the present government, I suppose. Um, but um, that's unfair because uh, many people of minorities have risen to very high positions uh, in India. So uh, then as far as uh, the relationship between the UK and India are concerned, that will definitely improve, but that is not going to be the first concern of the new Prime Minister. His concern is the, um, the status of uh, uh, UK after uh, the exit, after Brexit, there have been several issues, particularly the major issue about Ireland, Northern Ireland and, and, uh, and independent Ireland. Uh, what will happen when there are two different kinds of uh, customs regulations on these borders? Because one will be in the European Union, the other will not be in the European Union. So, so and also the deal with the uh, European Union has not been finalized. Even though Brexit has taken place, there are many negotiations yet to take place on what are the final arrangements are. Because initially, there was concern that Brexit will not succeed. But as a champion of Brexit, I think uh, Mr. Sunak uh, will be trusted even more uh, by the British when he takes any kind of decisions related to, to Brexit. Uh, but the pound has lost value, the prices have gone up, and the inflation is uh, very, very high. And all these issues cannot be resolved in a day. Unlike uh, Liz Truss, he has not rushed into a plan. He is taking more time to present a plan to the uh, to the people of of the of the UK, and uh, let us hope that he will have some magic formula uh, which will bring the country out of this uh, of this problem. 
and uh, that will only justify his uh, his appointment uh, but there is hope and uh, as indians we should pray for his success not for the sake of india's interest but the sake of stability in europe particularly at this time when the war is raging and the winter is coming and the prices of oil have gone up uh, companies oil companies seem to be making massive profits against which some taxation is being imposed or at least talked about in some countries they have imposed it already so there is complete chaos as far as the british economy is concerned so that is his priority and therefore for him to succeed i think he has to solve these problems and then it will justify his uh, selection but is everybody knows that he is a brilliant person and to me what a, what the lesson to be learned is for a, a brilliant indian to get recognition at the system the, the democracies the liberal democracies europe and elsewhere is a very good area place for brilliant indians to get recognition and that is a lesson we need to learn from um, big companies now indians are present to a high levels in the old days so indian immigrants their biggest dream was some one of them should become a doctor uh, but uh, now it has gone beyond that and has reached the highest position and this will be a matter of pride for people of indian origin and also a kind of inspiration in the united states also it is not just uh, kamala harris but also there are many uh, in people of indian origin who have been elected to the, the congress and that is a a uh, major change that is taking place in the united states so the ireland prime minister is another so generally indians have a good prospect in these free democracies and uh, and that is not exceptional for them india too has got this kind of uh, opportunities for people of minorities to come to high positions so let's hope it will be a will be a successful uh, prime minister and uh, he will also uh, bring the bring a good name name to indian immigrants in uh, uk usa and that's right thank you very much fine this is exactly what i have been saying so and there are many people who make this point so there is a triumphalism as i said you know we have answered the british back but um, it should not be seen like that it should be seen that liberal democracies are good opportunities for brilliant people and uh, an opportunity presented itself and mr sunak was the only person who could have been elected at that particular moment no uh, nobody can predict whether he will succeed or not listras failed miserably but she approached it differently from what sunak had originally proposed he had warned her she had warned her that taxation should not be reduced till the situation stabilizes so but on the other hand the situation has got worse because there is no respite uh, to the ukraine crisis and if it lasts longer the loss longer it lasts more serious it will be and um, so nobody can predict but as i said repeatedly before he was the only man of the moment nobody else could have been appointed <laughs> because of the election process and the support he had and therefore they had they had no choice and um, they think it was a as a choice and let us hope he succeeds well that is not his first priority of course he will want to have good relations with india but even on the trade agreement i don't think he will rush so it will be like any other prime minister india and uk have a long tradition most of us consider uk as our mother country even though even if people don't know what that country is and the long uh, history of uh, relationship even after the british left we remain in the commonwealth as a kind of gesture 
for the British India British relationship. So the new Commonwealth is in fact a creation of India. Otherwise, uh, those who be became totally independent left the Commonwealth. But we, even after becoming a republic, remained in the Commonwealth, and therefore a new Commonwealth was created. Otherwise, the Commonwealth would have ended with everyone turning to Republicans. So now, even if countries like Australia or Canada, etc., turn to become republic, but they still can remain in the Commonwealth, and the link with the with the UK can remain intact. Of course, Commonwealth itself really does not have an agenda because it is nothing but the UN agenda which they pursue. At one time, the Commonwealth had a logic because many of them were in, not independent, like South Africa, Rhodesia, etc. So now that that agenda is over, what the Commonwealth is doing is simply uh, copying some of the major issues in the United Nations, like uh, climate change or immigration or various issues. Um, the only one uh, particular talent that Commonwealth is supposed to have is the future of a number of island states. Because many of the island states, which were British colonies, have become independent. And they have enormous problems. And uh, will the UK take the responsibility to support them in their search for a solution to the climate change? Because some of them may even go underwater very soon, the way we are going. And therefore, that kind of a link, linkage may be there. Uh, but that is a more a global responsibility than a UK responsibility. So, so that is all that we can say uh, as far as relations are concerned. Not at all. In fact, UK and United States have had the best of relations throughout history. Of course, they are also a former, I mean, the United States also was a former colony of the British and they have fought a war for independence. Uh, but since then, they have the closest of relations. So that's not going to change. I don't think uh, Sunak will be particularly more friendly to the US because he was educated in the US. He found his wife in the US. There are so many connections. Uh, but it will not affect us. Our interests in the UK are not linked to UK interest in the United States and our relationship with the US also improving. So there's no reason why we should think of some game. That is, if UK is friendly with the United States, they should not be, should be unfriendly to us. That argument does not hurt. So this is the tradition, not only the tradition, the practice in the UK. That is, one party is elected for a particular period. The leaders can change, but the party can continue. But uh, there was demand for immediate elections, which is not mandatory. And therefore, they uh, chose to elect a new leader than go for general elections. So, uh, that is, uh, in India, for example, we have also had uh, changes of prime minister. Uh, without elections. But then finally a stage comes when nobody is able to uh, function effectively and then the Prime Minister themselves go for a general election, as it happened in the case of uh, Mr. Gujral and then later Mr. Vajpayee and so on. So general elections have been called. Uh, but that was possible in the uh, UK also. But in the present context, even the people may not have wanted an election in the UK at this particular time. So that was my test. I would only say that uh, there are several elements in this topic which will be of interest to the examiners, whether it is in the, uh, in the prelims. You know, many of these names might come up. Uh, many of the reasons for the present crisis in UK will come up. And also maybe in the mains examination too, the uh, UK situation may figure. So it will be necessary for all of you to uh, Familiarize yourself with the details and have your own assessment by the time you write uh, the examination. No, that's not uh, India's relationship with UK or him has nothing to do with the, <laughs> the future of uh, the of the UK.
Well, that they do all the time. Their own prime minister, their own presidents are criticized all the time. And so it's a free country. Anybody can criticize anybody. But um, government to government relationship will be excellent. It will be. Because it's a tradition and it will continue because particularly cooperation is becoming more and more important. They are members of a military alliance called uh, AUKUS, as you all know, for Indian Ocean, Indian Ocean region. So they have very, very strong relationship. They are members of NATO. They are fighting the war together. So all these are significant element, and elements and some criticism or talking about his origins or his style or his English or his money or the cut of his suit. All this will happen. That's normal. But that will have nothing to do with uh, his performance. But we never do that. Right? So we do not uh, plan our foreign policy on the basis of, basis of one country or one situation. So we are a diverse country. And we choose sides as we like. We have followed a non-aligned uh, policy all through, which does not rule out good relations with any country. And so it will not affect anyone. We, we are taking a very independent position vis-a-vis -vis Europe. That is because of this particular situation. And uh, we are not willing to uh, criticize Russia simply because they want us to do that, because we have a uh, we have talked about it very many times before. And we have a uh, traditional relationship. And um, we need to maintain it. At the same time, we have not uh, uh, supported Russian aggression. We have criticized it. We have told them that this is not the area, era of uh, war. All this has been done. So at the same time, we have kept our options open. If anybody is interested in India, uh, mediating or being uh, uh, together with other countries trying to resolve the issue. I don't know. That may be happening somewhere because uh, we are acceptable to both. Russian president has also been praising India recently, which is not very good because he will give the impression that uh, we are working together with him. That's not true. But he has been saying very many nice things and also talking about the future, etc. So that he'll naturally do, because he has that leverage there. Uh, but we will certainly not subscribe to that view. And uh, we will have to eventually, because of Russia, China, on one hand, various things happening in the world, uh, we may eventually end up in the, on the US side. So, and which will be UK side also. But we are not rushing there. We are weighing our options, choosing our friends, making use of the uh, available facilities on oil, trade, etc. with Russia. But that does not mean that we'll be with any particular country or region. We will exercise our uh, autonomy, strategic autonomy, which is our policy. No, it's not a done deal. It is being negotiated for a long time. And the economic crisis will have a definite impact. And also, as I said, uh, the, the world situation, uh, the global politics is such that people do not rush into agreements at this time because things are not normal. Like the fortune being made by oil companies, something very new. This much of profit they have never made and the government has to intervene. So these are all situations which will affect any trade agreement. And uh, therefore, I don't think it is done. It'll have to be, maybe it'll have to wait uh, some kind of uh, uh, settlement of the economic situation in the UK before we can sign it. No, she did not become prime minister because of her origin, but because she chose not to become prime minister. If she had wanted to, she could have. Maybe others may have advised her, uh, you know, advised her to do this uh, 
reports that uh, people like President Abdul Kalam advised her against it, etc. We don't know. These are just topics. Uh, but whatever it is, but we have accepted her as the president of the Congress Party for so many years. So what is the change? So that's something. So if they are saying, if anybody is saying that India is not liberal enough, we are liberal enough, enough to accept uh, an Italian lady as uh, uh, our leader, um, the leader of the Congress Party. And, uh, even when uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh was uh, uh, Prime Minister, she exerted major influence on the government. So that's also part of our own demands and our own, um, what shall we say, liberal mind. And, um, and of course, that she was married to Rajiv Gandhi was a major part. So she had the name Gandhi attached to her name. That also helped. So in many ways, she was accepted. She was never rejected by us. But be, her being prime minister was some kind of a, a technical aspect, which some people may have considered. But she was an Indian citizen. There was nothing would have prohibited her from becoming the prime minister. But the Brexit is a done thing. It's a done deal. Now nobody can go back on it. That is very clear. But what the terms would be that they would work out to deal with issues like Ireland and also issues like uh, migration. There are so many things which, since they have been part of a unified uh, group of countries, when you become independent, uh, look at the Indian situation. Uh, most companies dealing with UK, or dealing with uh, Europe, were located in London. And now all these companies have to establish another, another office in, uh, in Brussels or somewhere else in Europe uh, because they cannot operate entirely from UK. So, on the other hand, there are benefits. The Indian origin people in the UK believe that their chances have improved because the first priority to be given to EU members has disappeared. So, at least there was expectation that uh, uh, the Indian origin people will be better off uh, with Brexit. Of course, it will be in, uh, in only we see it in practice. But uh, certainly, it's, it cannot be reversed now. And uh, what can be done is to get a good deal from the EU. And that process will continue. Crisis or no crisis. Yes, there has been, but, uh, uh, but no referendum yet. And we don't know what the results would be. But this is true in many countries. There are differences, you know, affinities. And uh, Brexit has opened up this possibility of this conflict, Scotland becoming free and so on. But uh, it all depends on the local politics and how it uh, develops. So there is a, a section of opinion which believes that Scotland could be an independent country. And there may be some activities going on with regard to that. Uh, but not immediately, particularly after the present situation, I think UK has to settle down. And then you can have the luxury of talking about independence, etc. At the moment, I do not think that anybody will venture to do that. Thank you. Thank you.